Hello, this is Margaret Stratt, and I'm from the Buncombe County Health Department. You know how sometimes you just really want to have pizza? It's delicious. I'm going to show you how to make pizza without spending $20, $30 going out or $6, $7 for a frozen pizza. It's easy. This looks like a lot of stuff, but I'm giving you some options here. Now, I want to talk also about flour. I use whole wheat flour. It's better for you. It has more fiber. It has more nutrients. There are two kinds of whole wheat flour that I have used. This is regular whole wheat flour. It's a little bit stronger in flavor, a little bit thicker in texture. This is white whole wheat that I use in a lot of my baking for cakes and things like that. It's a little bit lighter in flavor and texture. I'm going to make a whole wheat crust out of this and of this just to show you some differences. Okay, let's start with the crust. Now, people think, oh gosh, yeast dough, I can't do it. You can. It is not hard. I have a recipe. You take three quarters of a cup of flour, and I'm using the white whole wheat flour. You can buy packets of yeast. If you don't want to buy packets of yeast, you can do a scant tablespoon of bulk yeast. So if you want to start doing this, you can buy your yeast bulk. It's less expensive and it's easier. I'll throw that in there. And then you're going to put in a little bit of sugar. And people say, oh gosh, sugar. You need a little sugar to feed the yeast. A little bit of salt. And that's to stop the yeast from working too hard. <laughs> We're trying to keep the yeast as a, uh, a, uh, a live organism. So we want to kind of keep it in the ideal atmosphere. I like adding Italian herbs to my um, crust. I just buy bulk herbs from it. And then you add to this, whisk it around because you do not want the yeast to touch too hot water. And you're going to add about two thirds, and I'm testing this to make sure it's not too hard, of hot water. You don't want it too hot. We don't want to have it bubbling. Whisk this around. And it gets kind of thick. Sorry. Okay. Now we're going to add about two tablespoons of oil. And I like mixing the oil in before I put the rest of the flour in. Just because I think it's easier. Then you're going to put another cup and a quarter of flour. And again, I'm using the lighter whole wheat. Now, you can turn this out and knead this. And I kind of want to show you how to do that because it's not hard. It will take a little bit of time. And it's actually great exercise for your hands. You're just going to use your hand and incorporate this. If you want to be lazy or you want to do it faster, you can use a mixer or a, a uh, food processor. bring this out. And you're going to need this. And you kind of get rid of all your stress from the day as you're doing this. Now I do want to say, sometimes kids come around or critters come around and say, oh please let me have a taste. But do not feed them yeast dough. It will grow in their stomach, and it can make you pretty sick. I didn't believe that when my father told me, so I tried it. Don't do it. OK, this is pretty well incorporated, and it's a pretty thick dough. You want to knead it for about five minutes. This incorporates some air in it, and it also builds gluten. And gluten is what makes bread have its texture. 
Now I'm going to put this in a bowl and normally you put it in a bowl. I'm just going to stick it back in this bowl. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the bottom and I like these dispensers and I'm going to kind of schlog it around. And I'm going to cover this and put it on the back of the stove. I'm going to go get the other crust that I made earlier and then we're going to roll it out and show you how to make pizza. Now, this is my dough that I have let rise. When you're making it with whole wheat flour, it is a little denser. It is a little tougher, but it's so much better for you. I also want to talk about baking your pizza. You can use a cookie sheet or you can use a pizza stone. I prefer pizza stone and that's simply because you get a better crust, I think. Now I'm going to mix this up. Ooh, my knuckles cracked. See, it's very therapeutic for hands. Now, I'm going to tell you, I am not able to throw it up, catch it, and throw it up again. It's just not going to happen. I throw it up, it's going to land on the floor, <laughs> and no one's going to want to eat it. So you don't have to be fancy, unless you want to be. And I'll tell you, you need to be a strong person. This is kind of like a a workout because your hands get really strong as well as your arms. Now you want to roll this out to about a 14 inch round. And I'm trying to make it round. I don't always succeed. Sometimes it comes out quite uh, creatively. But I think that's pretty good. Now, this is a pizza stone. They come with a little rack. You do not put these in soapy water because the soap will come into this. It will absorb. So you want to allow it to, um, uh, you just wash it with warm water. So it gets kind of gross looking, but it's not bad. And it's heated in a 500 degree oven. You put these in the oven before you put your pizza on them. You want these hot. Now for transport, I'm going to use this. And to make it kind of interesting like they do in the pizzerias, I'm putting some cornmeal on it. Now, you can use cornmeal. In a pinch, I've used grits. Just whatever's easiest. Now, I am going to make, now, you can make your own sauce. I'm lazy. I buy jarred sauce. You don't want too much sauce on this. And I'm also going to use the pesto sauce because that is a totally decadent one. I'm going to use that on one of the other crusts that you can do. Again, I want this to be easy. What do you want on your pizza? You want some peppers? Let's put some pretty peppers on here, make it kind of creative. You want these fairly thinly sliced. And if you do different colors, you get different nutrients. Let's put a few olives. And you can put whatever kind of olives. If you want to make faces, the kids can make faces. A little bit of onion. I like onion on my pizza. My son doesn't. So we get it and he picks it off and he gets something else that I pick off. Between the two of us, we're happy. Broccoli works really well on pizza. Do not put cauliflower on pizza. Again, been there, tried that. You don't want to do that. Artichoke hearts. Again, this pizza, I think even our cameraman will like it. And it doesn't have any pepperoni. Some other olives. 
add a little dash of oomph. Okay. And then the cheese. That looks yummy, doesn't it? And again, you can put as much or as little cheese as you want to. This is part skim mozzarella. Okay, I'm going to go put this on the pizza stone in the oven. And then in a little while, you'll get to see what it looks like. The next thing I'm going to do is what we used to do when my son was little. We used to use English muffins or pitas and make pizza. Now, some people say to make them with um, frozen uh, biscuits, or you can do the, the uh, frozen rolls and just roll them out. English muffins are easier. And you can have your bowls ready with all your stuff. And I did some peppers that were smaller. This is a good way to get kids to eat their vegetables. About a tablespoon of sauce, not too much. And I use the light English muffins. You can use the whole wheat. If you really want to, you can use the white English muffins. I'm going to put a little bit of pesto on this. I did this once with kids. I have teenagers come to my house. And this one child and I made, he was the one willing to help, so he got to choose. We made pesto and spinach. And it was the most wonderful thing I think we've ever eaten. But he and I both like spinach. So I'm going to put a little spinach on there. And on this one, I'm going to put a little bit of artichoke. Now, some of these things your kids aren't going to like. I'll be, you know, honest. But I'm kind of making them for us, too. On this green, I'm going to put some peppers. And kids like broccoli. Pretend it's trees. Uh, here's some tomato pieces. You know, all depending on what you like. And then, of course, you're going to put some cheese on top. These are small portions. You have to remember, little kids have small tummies. This is going to be enough for them. And I'm going to pick up the cheese because otherwise it smells terrible when it cooks and burns. I am going to put these in the toaster oven. And I'm going to, I don't want to bake them as much as I want to broil them. And I'm going to broil them for about 10 minutes. We're going to keep half an eye on them. I'm going to get my cookie sheet back and I'm going to do some pita pizzas. And again, you can have the pitas, and they're usually pre-cut somewhere. You can make your own pitas. Once you're making your pizza dough, well, I'm not going to open them. You can open them or not, depending on what you want to do. I'm going to make another one. I'm trying to think what would be really neat with the Pesto. I think I'll do an onion. You can tell I like pesto and tomato. How about that? You want to have relatively thin slices of onion. And you don't want to go too wild with them. Um, and then I'm going to do a tomato sauce. I'm trying to think what combination I haven't done, because I want to show you a whole bunch of different things on here. Let's see. This goes well. And I'll put some more green peppers, a little bit of broccoli. Now you can see, this is not taking very long. I also want to say, I use frozen broccoli because it's easier. It's less expensive. It's frozen right after it's picked. I mean, they have the little freezer carts almost in the fields. And it's less expensive in a lot of ways. Now, if you're growing your own um, broccoli in your own garden, that would be wonderful. You can use it. You can put 
ham and shrimp, or pineapple on pizza. There are no rules. Um, I have put, oh Lord, I'm trying to think of all the really good things you can put on. So this is just a variety. They're colorful vegetables. They're good tasting. I lost my cheese there for a second. And again, you can put different kinds of cheeses. Some people like Asiago. Some people like the mozzarella. Some people put some Parmesan. Oopsie. And we're going to cook these in the oven for just a little while. It's starting to smell really good in here. I put the pizza stone on the bottom because I wanted the pizza the bottom to cook really well. And this, because it's thinner, I'm putting it on top. So the pizza stone's going to kind of keep it from getting too hot and too burned. Welcome back. I've taken the pizzas out of the oven. We have a good variety, different skill levels, different textures, different flavors. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, this summer, it was a real hot day, <laughs> I wanted something easy. I had bought a prefab pizza crust at the grocery store. I had tons of tomatoes from my garden. Thinly slice the tomatoes, lay them on the um, pizza crust, put some Italian herbs and some cheese. That and a salad was dinner. It was delicious. Now I'm going to invite somebody to come in and try some pizza. I'm going to cut this. With these, you can cut if you want to. You don't have to, really. If you have young children, those you can cut. This you definitely want to cut. Now, ugh. this has got a good crusty crust. If you want to make it thicker, you can. This is hot, and that looked great. It's about $10, much more nutrient dense, and just plain good. I want to invite Megan Lester, our intern, to come up and eat some pizza with me. These might be a little hot. You might want to try one of these. All right. And there's the tomato. You know this one. Okay. I'm going to do my favorite the pesto and spinach. This is to die for. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's really good, Margaret. Want a little taste of that? Sure. You want to trade? Yeah. <laughs> We're friends now. Is that not yummy? Mm. That's Your kids really good. might actually like spinach. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. For more information, you can go to the Buncombe County website, Cooking for Your Health, for recipes and other ideas. Goodbye.